Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Choose Positive Living right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I am your host, Sarah Troy, and my guests today, Mr. and Mrs. Stephen and Donna Fry, all the way from Australia. And they're talking about the power of connection 365 days a year and the journey of meeting someone new every day and what it means and who is it serving along the way. What kind of conversations can we ignite? and where's the kindness that we can uh, give out and you know this is a, a totally different journey for them I mean Stephen calls himself a recovering socially awkward engineer but you know they go right right back to you know the 70s early 80s and uh, knew each other back then both took different life patterns and then found their way back again and here they are now are uh, not only uh, in a different life with each other but also on a different path and a path of connection connection is really everything isn't it it's building relationships it's expressing ourselves it's being invitational um, and if we're afraid to connect we're not going to get anywhere but connection isn't always about kind of sitting down a coffee or this or that or over around a table connections can be made anywhere and of course we connected through linkedin which has led to this and it's just reaching out to someone and kind of, hello, I'm here. I see you. You know, where is the connection? So delighted to have you both on here, Stephen and Donna. I'm sorry, I've got some dings going on in the background here. We'll just ignore those. And uh, the love of connecting. Who started this? Who was the one that said, let's just connect with someone different every single day? Welcome to the show. Thank you very Thank much, you. Sarah. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're glad to be here. And uh, yeah, that's definitely a, a question we get asked uh, um, a lot. Like, you know, why, why do you, why did, how did this start? Why did, why did you start connecting with someone every day? Um, and for us, it was um, a journey of um, wanting to, to change and, and learning how to connect with people. So it, it wasn't, um, it, it evolved over time. Mm -hmm. So we, we started on the 27th of November a journey of meeting someone every day. But it was 12 months before that that we'd heard about uh, a concept of meeting someone every day. And I must admit, when I first heard about it, it literally s scared me or I didn't understand. Like, how could The mechanics someone... of it as the engineer, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, how could someone possibly meet someone they've never met before every day? Mm -hmm. um, but without going through all that at the moment, the, we went through a journey of learning skills and... Um, um, and increasing our self-confidence till we got to the point that one particular day where um, we just happened to start. It was going to be a New Year's resolution. And, but if I waited to the beginning of the year, I'm pretty sure I would have talked myself out of it, mm -hmm. which, is New, which is why the New Year's resolution started on the 27th of November, not the 1st of January. Yeah, and it was really set in place by the 1st of January, right? <laughs> that resolution was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's a lovely thing to do. Um, you know, a lot of people give social media a bad rap. And we've got to remember it's an algorithm. The algorithm, you feed it. And if you're feeding it with excitement, ignitement, connection, then those are the people you're going to meet. If, if you're going on there with the hate fest, well, those are the people you're going to attract. It goes by the algorithm. So it's not just connecting out with people. It's how we connect out with them. You know, make that connection, whether it be physical or through social media, and the intent behind it. What was the intent that you were hoping to achieve this way? So the real intent when we first started was really around us learning how to connect with people. And in fact, it was even more basic than that. The skill that we wanted to learn was, how do you go out in normal day life and connect with someone you never met before and start a conversation? How do you do that? So we really wanted to learn the art of just interrupting people without being weird, starting a conversation and, and seeing if that might lead to a new friend. So we went out in general public and met people every day 
because this started before we even uh, looked at connecting with people on, on social media. So every day we'd wake up and we'd think, where can we go today to meet someone today? So we joined the gym, you know, we did all sorts of different things to physically meet people. Um, so that was the intention. The intention was just to, to learn how to connect with people because we saw it as one of the best things that we could do. Like if we're going to add value to people, one of the best ways we sort of add value was to reach out and connect. So it was driven by that desire to learn how to connect. Yeah. Right. Well, um, the engineer or mind may be looking for the mechanics to do that. But what about you, Donna? I mean, you know, generally women do connect better than men um, because, you know, we're, oh, I love your shoes. I love your bag. I love your hair. <laughs> we can start a conversation anywhere, right? Um, was it difficult for you? Was it a new concept for you? No, not really, because <laughs> like you said, it is easier for women yeah. to connect, I think. And, and, and that's exactly what I used to do. And when we'd be out shopping together, you know, oh, look at your gorgeous baby or, mm -hmm. or something like that. And um, I never used to really realise, I guess, at the time that it sort of made Stephen feel a bit awkward that I was doing that, <laughs> um, you know, because it was natural to me. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I guess one day I sort of, I asked him, when we started to discuss the meeting someone knew every day, I did ask him. So, so all the times we're out together and I, I do that thing where I'm like, oh, you know, just make a conversation with someone. Did that kind of make you feel awkward? And he said, yeah, well, it did really. I said, well, I had no idea. <laughs> and, but then the funny thing was, I guess, when we came up with the concept of deliberately going out and meeting someone new every day, it kind of put the pressure on a little bit and made me, I don't know, it, was, it came a little bit, just at first, a little bit more, um, I'm not, I'm not sure the word I'm thinking of, just a little bit more scary or something because... We're more you know, deliberate because yeah. you've been doing it naturally now you're doing yeah. it deliberately. Yeah. <laughs> now it was just like we'd go out somewhere and I'm looking around saying, who can I talk to? <laughs> <laughs> what, what reason can I find to start a conversation? Yeah. I mean, I'm really, quite honestly... People don't really need a reason, do they? You know, it, it's just that making that connection. Is it with the yeah. eyes? Is it with a smile? Is it a good morning or a good afternoon? And, and see how receptive someone is into responding. Yeah, but, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't make everybody respond, yeah. but Correct. it, it depends yeah. on how you invite. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we learned when we we're, when were out there having to physically meet people. We learned the only thing we could control was to say hello to people. And even that was weird for me, like there's a lake near where we lived and I used to walk around the lake and, and not, not even say anything. So I had to learn just to say hello to everyone that, that I'd cross paths with. And that's the thing I could control is to say hello. How they responded was something that I couldn't control. So I had to learn not to worry about what the mm -hmm. response was. Mm -hmm. So I can yeah. just control asking or saying hello. Um, and then you'd say hello to a enough people and someone would stop and start a conversation to the point that you'd get a photo. So it wasn't just meeting someone every day. We, we met someone, had a conversation and got a photograph with them and asked them if it was okay to put it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It was a very, it, got a, it was a bit more of a deeper conversation. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to put it on Instagram? Who's going yeah. to look at it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, is, Where's Big Brother? <laughs> People are, seem to be innately suspicious yes. um, when a stranger starts to speak to them. So, yeah, um, yeah but, but generally once we'd explain mm. the reason behind it, probably 99% of people were pretty good with it. And, and, and in fact, a lot of people just thought it was a really awesome idea. And of course, mm. right now, you know, uh, we are still in lockdown in Canada. Um, and of course, it's still rather rampant in the States. Uh, I don't know what uh, COVID is like in, in Australia, but, you know, um, the isolating of ourselves or keeping our distance, you know, people are craving connection, oh, craving oh. for a conversation right now. So you'd probably have a lineup right now of people wanting to connect. Okay. I'm sorry, our day quota is up. Come back next day. <laughs> yeah, um, and you're right. Like, we never expected this. We every day for a numerous amount of days it was waking up every day not knowing who it was we we're going to meet today mm -hmm. and then when this whole restriction came with uh, being out and about we had a decision to make but there was no decision we'd already made the decision we're yeah. going to meet every day so being restricted was not going to stop us we just didn't know how we we're going to do it and right. we sort of 
we sort of fell into connecting with people on LinkedIn and and that's just been an amazing I've never really used LinkedIn before mm-hmm. and it's been quite an incredible way to connect with people and people uh, like you said Sarah are just reaching out to want to connect um, and and it's amazing I think because of two reasons one um, you know we can connect today we have the mm-hmm. technology to connect and the other thing we were always taught that if you want to um, connect with someone you need to find some form of common ground and the interesting thing at the moment is the entire planet all seven billion or so of us all right now have common ground yeah. we, we can all we've all had some exposure to this particular virus so it is a it is a talking point so you can connect with anyone and just ask the simple question how are you coping with the restrictions and you start a conversation based on some common ground yeah so it's, it's amazing to be able to reach out to people right now. Yeah. And as I said, people are needing it. You know, I'm, I'm being particularly more busy. <laughs> I normally am, you know, like all these people moaning about time on their hands. I'd love to have some time on my hands. <laughs> but again, it's like, you know, making lemonade out of lemons, isn't it? You know, and if you actually look at what lemons do for you, they're incredibly healthy and very beneficial. So I don't know why lemons got picked on, but it's, we look at any situation in life and go, oh, I can't do that anymore. Does that mean I stop? You know, that, does that mean I give it up? No, it just means you redirect and you mm-hmm. look for a different way to do it in a different place. It may be a different format, which is what you've done and how we came across each other. And as I said, with the social medias, you know, they follow an algorithm. And so they're going to bring you like people following that rhythm. And it's really just putting the invitation out and starting the conversation. And that's what I say to, to people, I use Twitter more as a, as a posting, but uh, uh, social media like Facebook and uh, LinkedIn, this is where I converse. And, yeah. you know, you're conversing in the chat. Somebody says something, you respond, and then you kind of, let's have a chat, a real one, right? Yeah. And then you arrange that, and you don't know where it's going to go. You don't know who you're going to meet, but that's what's exciting, yeah. right? I get to meet people yeah. like you through a, a social media because I thought what you're doing was cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and that concept of uh, connecting with someone on LinkedIn and then sitting down um, expectantly starting a Zoom call wondering what it's all going to be like <laughs> and then at the, end of, and at the end of a half hour literally having a new friend is yeah. quite an yeah. amazing experience. Yeah, and, and, um, and you know, it's, although it's nice to actually physically meet people and sit down with them, you know, when we do connect, we're connecting vibrationally anyway. We're connecting to other people on a wavelength, on a signature. So whether it be through this apparatus or whether physically they're there, you've made that connection. Yep. You know, it's where that connection could go as far as a hug or shaking hands or something else. It's a little bit different, but it's still a connection that you have made. So people, oh, no, these are fake connections online. No, they're not. They are no. just as real no. as they would be if somebody was right there in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I really think they're even more real. Um, yeah, yeah, from the perspective mm-hmm. that if it's someone you know every day, like I can understand people saying they miss the physical contact with people, like yeah. I, I do with close friends and, 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 and people that we know well. Mm-hmm. But for people that you've never met before, that you're meeting for the first time, mm-hmm. this is by far, from our experience, the most incredible way mm-hmm. to connect because you have... You know, you spend a half an hour of focused time with someone that even if you had that time in a coffee shop wouldn't be anywhere near as, as quality time because you've no. got no distractions. Mm-hmm. Um, you have that ability to, in the comfort of where you are, to ask all sorts of questions. Yeah. And you really get to know people. Um, and that's what's blown us away is that you really feel like at the end of a half hour, some conversations go for an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, like, and that's the crazy thing. We used to bump into people speak to them for a few minutes, get a photograph with them mm-hmm. and it was done. Yeah. Now we're finding with Zoom and people we connect with on LinkedIn, some, some of them up to an hour conversation with people. It's quite amazing. Very easy. Believe me, I find it very easy. You know, I normally do pre-calls, as you know, and how, how much did ours go on for? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that is the, the thing when you click with someone. It's a flow. A conversation shouldn't be, oh, God, what, what am I going to say next? What did they mean yeah. by that? That's not a conversation. You know, the conversation is you say, oh, I've had that experience, or oh, really tell me more about it. It's a two way street. Yeah. And that's what makes the conversation exciting. Each one of you are sharing. 
a piece yeah. of yourselves and that's what makes that connection really work and i'm sure with some people it's just a once and that's it and other people will come back again because that connection was so good yeah most definitely and we go into the com every conversation with the belief that everyone has something interesting everyone has something we can learn from them and because everyone has different experiences in life that's gotten to the point at which we've connected with them and we just have that belief that everyone we speak to whether we might personally connect with them or not because some people like you said you know they're just just different you just connect with some better than others but it doesn't mean they don't have something that i can learn from them right so that so that forces us to ask questions to seek to understand rather than to be understood mm -hmm. and and that just that just helps us to you know sometimes we have a we don't even speak at all like you know, some conversations are we say nothing <laughs> and and people just um so excited to just tell them tell yeah. us all about themselves yeah and, yeah, yeah. yeah. they feel they feel safe they feel trusted and out it comes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of people said, well, what's this all about then? And, you know, for you, there isn't really an, an agenda other than conversations, connecting with people every day and really rather like a spider's web, just be, you know, building out that big web of connections. And then it's like somewhere along the line, you know, I spoke to somebody about that. You could connect with them. And then, then it's reconnecting yeah. people along the way, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So, and you're right, the whole, we had to do this in our mind okay well it's one of those days where technology has its way of faux pas happening and of course um we might have missed some content here we're going to go back over it again just in case we did but one of the things that comes into mind is when you meet people it might be they're in a rush you're in, you know you're not in a rush because you aren't deliberately there meeting people and people don't have the chance to talk now but would love to meet up later and it's just just kind of honoring where people are at that time but of course, now you're doing an awful lot of connecting through Zoom, which we have just noticed can be very difficult sometimes. <laughs> I guess I thought this was recording and then suddenly the recording button is not on. Um, but the, it, it changes it. And I think you said it uh, earlier on, Stephen, is the fact when you're doing it by Zoom, most people have put that time aside. They're sitting here in front of their screens or their phones and they're not rushing around because they have set that time aside. And, and that really does open more for that deeper connection, that deeper conversation, as long as everything's working properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's definitely what we found is that um, the conversations that we have now um, connecting with people on LinkedIn and having specific times to talk to them via Zoom allows like a half an hour of a concentrated conversation in some cases the conversations have gone out like for an hour or so mm -hmm. so we find ourselves you know, opening up a zoom call in some cases not knowing who's going to pop up on the other side yeah. you know, most people look completely different than their linkedin profile yes they're the 20 year old self right and then there's the 50 year old self in front of you <laughs> and then through a you know a, a half hour discussion at the end of it in most cases coming away with a new friend is quite an amazing experience yeah. And it's, it's a better conversation than if you'd met someone that you'd never met before and say, uh, set a time to meet them at a coffee shop. Because a coffee shop in itself has distractions. Yeah. You know, yeah. something might have happened on the way there which keeps people's mind off of it. You know, it's just, a, it's just not actually the best way to connect with people. No. Um, but in an environment like this where people set aside the time, they're prepared. Um, it's quite amazing how, how deep the conversations and how much you get to understand people. And often we, we don't really say much at all and, and the person that we're talking to, we might just ask one question and just just get a continuing flow of, of yeah. all the things that they're excited about telling us and it's fantastic yeah. um, when that happens because it's just, we're so happy to just sit here and listen to anything they want to tell us about um, and, and it just shows what you were saying before that people do want to you know want people to to care about them and hear about what they've been doing and 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 appreciate them and which we do we love it when people just really open up to us and and tell us a lot of stuff yeah. i think uh, doing it this way people feel less vulnerable you know yes. they feel safe they're in their own home their own environment <laughs> You know, if they don't like the conversation, then cut it off at any time, you know, uh, and, and it's a little more awkward. I mean, it's different if you're meeting someone you've already met. You've met them. You know 
you know you where you're going with it but if it's a perfect stranger you know this allows i think for more intimacy more security and and a way more where people i think are going to be more revealing um yes. never mind the noise or anything you don't know who else is listening to the conversation but they're in yes. their own home in their own space yes. and so that already puts god down yep. yes yeah, yeah, and, sure. yeah and and we've learned i guess the skill that we're developing is just the questions that we can ask as well Mm -hmm. um, the further deep in the conversation and really um, really draw out interesting things about people. Yeah. Um, but it, it's not that hard though because people are really that interesting. Like when you mm -hmm. speak to a, a young girl in Egypt, just as we did recently, who's you know into entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. like it's a really interesting discussion. Or you speak to the laughter coach that we spoke to from South Africa in the last week who makes a living out of teaching people how to laugh. Um, <laughs> I had yeah. one of those. I had the laughing guy on before. Yeah, you even had a laughing app. You get too seriously, oh, okay. press the app and it laughs and you can't help but laugh <laughs> along with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, people are, are that interesting that, you know, half hour conversations really don't, you know, just happen really quickly mm, because yeah. they, they really are that interesting. Yeah. 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 And, you know, this is the thing I think, you know, but, you know um, we were talking earlier, which I hope got recorded about, you know, the times, you know, the, that the times has pushed us, you know, onto doing things online. But then through that, we're seeing more of the benefit, you know, instead of someone having to get in the car and go down and meet you at a certain place, you know, in their busy day, it's much easier to carve out half an hour in their own home amongst, you know, what they're doing than that half an hour it's going to take for them to get to where you want to meet them. So that convenience, I think also plays very much more into it. And, you know, we were talking about being introverted and extroverted before, and you were saying you, you really, you know, were the, the, the introverted engineer, you know, whether you had to really come out of your shell and you had to learn how to do this. And someone gave you a book on this that goes back to the 30s, which is just <laughs> kind of common basics, right? And, yeah. you know, when we look at it, life is really quite simple. Since the beginning of time, and we've learned speech, we've found a way to communicate with each other. Right. And yep. so it's, I think, getting out of your head. And as I said, coming from your heart. And when you yeah. do that, the conversation will flow. The words will flow, even if they're broken words, because it's broken English. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, it, and it keeps coming back to, I think I've said it before, which is, you know, to be able to, you know, it, it seems to be a cliche that people are using a lot, but it's so true. Like you can only control what you can control. I, all I can do is reach out either physically and say hello and if people choose not to respond and, and that, that's that's what that's due to the circumstances that have got them to that point in life i had to learn not to let that that was not a reflection on me no, don't take it personally yeah. when, I, when i first started this that was very hard because yeah. when someone wouldn't talk to you for example you said hello and they didn't say hello back you started going what have I done wrong? What, what, what's wrong mm -hmm. with me? Mm -hmm. so there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with me. I've done what I can do, which is reach out and say hello, connect with someone on LinkedIn. If they choose not to respond, that's not a reflection of me. That's a reflection of where they are at this point in time in their life. Yeah. Um, and that, that, getting that through my understanding mm -hmm. makes communicating with people a lot easier because if you do it with the right intent, and with the, with the view of adding value and they choose not to respond, well, so be it. I mean, you know, some people, they look at some people and they see a sign, serial killer. <laughs> 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 you know? and it's like lighten up, you know. Yeah. Uh, we've got to realize we reflect, right? So if we're a person that's in fear or distrustful, that's going to come out there and immediately look at somebody as distrustful mm -hmm. because we feel distrustful or, or fearful in our own lives. We, so that reflection is always there. and. You know, it does take something to go up and just say hello. This is why I think women is easy because we can hit, you know, the fashion. We can hit with the kid or the this and that. It's much easier for us to do that. Um, you know, for a guy, you know, for you to start commenting on someone's shoes or jacket, they might kind of be thinking you're picking them up. Yeah. So, you know, so you do have to find a verbiage uh, yeah. on, on a cold greet. You know, that's yeah. going to open people up. So what do you generally actually say to them? I'm going to say you, Stephen, like, no wife with you, just you, that, you know, doesn't have people running scared. Yeah, well, you know, it's really quite simple. I just had to learn how to say hi. Yeah. But that's all yeah. it is. Like, you know, and then people either respond to that or they won't respond to that. So 
know, it was just a matter of saying hi, and if they said hi back, then it was about being creative about what to say next and try to not make a, um, a statement, but to try to ask a, a question that created, demanded a response. And again, that's just a skill and being observant. And, and over time, that was able to be developed. Um, but now, like, everything is online. So now it's slightly different where, you know, I just, I'm just up front and you connect with someone and then, you know, just reach out and just say, hey, look, you know, it's nice to connect with you. It'd be up to, to essentially have a chat via Zoom. Yeah. And some people are going to say yes and some people are going to say no. Yeah. And, of course, the beautiful, you're, you're interacting on LinkedIn or any of the other places with, you know, following somebody. You know, yeah. if somebody starts a comment thread and somebody responds to that comment and then somebody comments on that comment and, you know, that's how it goes off and you can reach out. So I really like this thread, would love to actually have a conversation with you yeah. about it. So there's so many different ways you can connect through this medium. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the most amazing thing is it's connections of connections. Yes. It's just incredible. And the willingness of people to want to connect too is just, it's just been amazing for us. People that want to reach out and want yeah. to talk. Um, it's been you know, unexpected, really. Yeah. Like I, I, I never, I never, never. It's not something I expected was going to happen. Right. <laughs> we, didn't, we were yeah. doing anything that um, that would be that exciting to other people, but it seemed to have, have been yeah. that way. That um, that's how people are seeing it, because we, you know, the whole thing just started as a way for us to connect with people and and to just learn to be nice and add value and be kind. And, and with no agenda. So I guess the, just the, um, the thought of people looking at it and saying, oh, wow, this is really cool. I want to be a part of that. It hadn't even really crossed our minds, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and most of that is because we're still struggling with ourselves. Like, <laughs> you know, there's two main things we learned through this process was mm. two things I'm still still learning to overcome and the first one was judge, judgment mm. we, mm -hmm. like for whatever reason like we inherently judge people and it's and just a human characteristic yeah we and, all do it i, I know we, we've been taught to yeah, we've been taught someone's different you've got to judge them somebody says something you disagree with you've got to judge them we've been taught that through the ages and yeah. and who are we to pass judgment and when yeah. people talk about the norm, well, what is the norm? There are the common codes of conduct in life, yeah. Yeah. the common sense things that we need to have. They're yeah. basically the foundational codes in which to live. But for yeah. someone to come along and place judgment, well, you're doing it differently, so you're wrong, you're evil. Yeah. You know, that again, finger point back. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a reflection of your own inner self rather yeah. than the outer yeah. them, person and you're right. talking to. For us, it was more appearances when we started meeting yeah. people. So you know, as one example, you know, one particular night before when we were still meeting people physically, it was getting late at night or coming out of the gym, still hadn't met anyone that day. So that, because you set yourself a goal, you do things you wouldn't normally do. So our next step was to go to the 24-hour bakery in the city because we had to meet someone. Um, but we saw this young guy um, at the gym sitting down. He, had his, um, he was sitting down, his earphones on. Tattle up his arm, massive arms, like arms bigger than huge. Huge, like <laughs> and, and he did, he looked scary, but you know, what do you do? Like, how do you start a conversation? So, I remember, well, maybe if you thought, say what you thought. Oh, I, I walked past him first, and, and at the corner of my eye, I could see Stephen looking at him, and in my head, I'm thinking, Oh, don't say hello to him. No, he looks scary. Like, <laughs> like what if he, you know, what if he jumps up and and and, um, yeah, and, and that, what a horrible thing to think because what happened? Yeah. So I thought, what do you say? So I just the, the words that popped in my head was, "Mate, you've got big arms." Yeah. Like, exactly. Massive arms. And then that then he took off his headphones and that started a conversation. And you go. And it was an amazing young man, 20, young 27 man. years of age, runs his own company, employs lots of people. He has a young son, which we saw for, like in, in the great story of how he came out to Australia, ended up in a detention centre. And it was just this amazing story um, yeah. behind what we judged. And yeah, that, that was the biggest wake-up yeah. call for us, I think, yeah. was that yeah. night. Don't judge a book by its cover, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And we'd heard that and we thought we didn't do that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
until you find yourself doing it. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's the same, you know, with what we're getting with nationalities and people of color. You know, I, I live with an 86 year old lady you, you saw just now and, it, and it's, uh, it's just a pigment of their skin. <laughs> you know, it's, we're all the same inside. We, we're, you know, we may in our cultures go about things a different way. But ultimately, we're all foundationally, we're wanting the same thing. Meaningful purpose in life, to know that we count, know that we can love and be loved, know that we're safe. Um, and, you know, the ability to explore and expand in our lives. And fundamentally, we're all looking for that. So yeah, yeah. why we start getting these judgments back and forth, you know, it's not yeah, productive. And, and to, act, to be confronted with that and force yourself to sit down and go, why does that happen? It was, was really a worthwhile exercise. And the other one is tolerance that we've learned. Mm. So, and tolerance about, you know, we other make people's opinions yes, and perspectives yeah. and thoughts. So, we found ourselves having a conversation with someone that might have a different belief or a different perspective or opinion to us. And it was like this feeling just, yeah. wor this whole wall comes up in front of you and it really uh, hurts the conversation. And, and again, it's like you go away and you go, where does that come from? Where does mm. out of nowhere come this, just you're having this great conversation and they share something that's different to your belief and all of a sudden this, this wall comes up with inside of you and it's like, where does that come from? And then to sit down with people and, and have that discussion about, hey, look, you know, when you said that, this is the feeling that I had and to work through like, why, why, do, why am I so intolerant? I, I thought I was tolerant. Yeah. Right. We're scared of, of people who think or feel or are different. Yeah. You know, if we don't understand something, we start to feel small, yeah. you know, and we, we feel less than. And if we instead looked at it and go, I know what I know, but I'm eager to know what other people know as well, because that's the expansion of thought. Yeah. So then it was like, okay, let's understand why you, why you have that belief. I want to understand why, why you think that way. I don't have to agree with it. Right. But that doesn't, or, or believe that what, I don't have to change my beliefs, but I can ask the questions to understand why they believe what they believe, to seek to understand why they do, not not to change my belief, but to seek to understand. Right. And to be okay with that as well. well because, to be okay with because that. Because at yes. the end of the day, everyone's entitled to have exactly, their, their exactly, and think and feel the way they do. Um, and if we want people to to think that about us, to accept, you know, that this is how we think and feel and what we believe and everything, then we have to be that for other people first. Yes. Um, that, that, that was the biggest thing is just flipping it around because it, um, yeah, one of the things we learnt was we do have very um, solid values and thoughts and perspectives and opinions, um, but so does everybody else. Rather than putting up a barrier because mm. of that, let's understand that and let's go well that's great that you feel that way and you know even if it isn't the way I feel it's great that you believe that and think that and, and do that because that's who you are yes and, and that's awesome you know and and instead of going oh I think that's weird about that person that they do that it's like no it's not it's awesome because that's right. who they are yes and, and the thing is you know I've been judged all my life because I'm very different. I'm not everybody's cup of tea and somebody's strong cup of black coffee. And I do things differently. I come across differently. Uh, my beliefs and things that experiences have I had uh, for some people are too out there. Uh, they're just, you know, totally different in dimension to what the way they're thinking. And I, so, you know, I always try and speak in the, the other person's language in a sense of their comprehension. That doesn't change who I am. I'm just trying to be flexible, but I'm not going to compromise who I am at any time because we're not meant to click with everybody and that's okay. Yes. It is perfectly normal. Yep. Yeah. 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 And, and to realize that, yeah, if someone doesn't, connect with you or, or click with you that that again is no reflection on me right that was that, was, that yeah that, it's yeah. just it's just just preference you know i'm a yeah. true colors coach you know the four key personalities and and i think by understanding our personality traits we understand it, how we speak but we also get to understand who is communicating with us which yeah. personality trait because yeah. you know especially like an entrepreneurial mind which is generally a green it's very analytical 
And it's like, well, what, what did you really mean by that? And want to dissect it. And what's the core of that meaning, you know, where I'm in true blue, where I just speak from the heart and you can make sense out of it. So, you know, so I think having a little bit of that understanding of which personality is communicating with you and being able to shift our dance onto another foot and speak into a language they understand. Maybe they're a visualer an audio, the kinesthetic, um, you know, somebody comes from research and try and speak to them in a way that that is their comprehension. But if, you know, it's not you losing yourself. It's just you expanding yourself in a way to communicate in different ways. I still can't stop being a screaming blue. You know, that is who I am and my blue language will come screaming through, but I try and hear and listen and communicate in the other languages as well, just so that the doors are open. At the same time, I hope that other person can step out of their color and open up their mind to understanding the other perspectives as well. Yeah. Yeah. Two-way street yeah. conversation, isn't yeah. it? Exactly. Yeah. And, and the skill of listening by far is the most amazing thing that we can learn. Because um, when, you, when you listen with, without thinking about what you're going to say, when you truly listen, to people, it, it is an, um, it's incredible the communication that you have because mm. um, listening, listening is a skill again that's not taught or, or understood. You know that listening is a, such a significant part of conversation. Yes, yeah. which, yeah. Is, which is good for introverts because <laughs> that's a skill that introverts can really use because they they can sit and listen. That's and the did you? I, can, I, I find it easy to listen. I had to, but I had to learn to listen properly. Like yeah, it, it's not just listening to respond, is it? You yeah, know, sure. a lot of the time you said it earlier, Donna, about, you know, uh, hearing something and immediately your, your response and your answer is in there. And, you yeah. know, through doing eight years of podcasting, I've learned that myself. And it's like, okay, I'm putting that up there and I, I want to be able to address it but let, let the conversation flow and I'll bring it back in if it fits down here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because so we, a lot of, I mean, you know, going back to business and sales and things like that, people are taught to pitch, a sales yeah. pitch, and yeah. they go out and do their sales pitch and you're trying to sell, you know, snow to an Eskimo, you know, and it's just like, have you listened to what I need? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so crucial, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've read a, yeah. a couple of good books. There's a, I can't remember the lady that wrote it, but there's a book called Cure the Elevator Speech. And there's another book that talks about, um, what's that title again? Um, the, the Win Without Pitching Manifesto. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another good book to, to read is uh, Who Moved My Cheese? by yeah. uh, Spencer Johnson, MD. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. It's a wonderful book, isn't it? I don't know if you knew that they have it in a children's book as well now, oh, for, you know, for change for children. So children who are going through changes in life, you know, that they always believe it's their fault. You know, this is a beautifully graphic and a book for that. But I came across that book about 30 years ago and I just loved the concept of it, you know, for people who don't know, two mice, two men who live around abundance of cheese and one day the cheese is gone and it's the four different reactions. And those reactions are very, very key to the true color trait personalities and if we understand how we perceive that cheese it's gone what are we going to do about it, it tells us a lot about our own traits our own our own fears and yeah. also our abilities to, to look at something okay well it's not there anymore what am i going to do about it go looking for something else no you don't cry about it there's the choice you know so yeah it's a great book highly recommend it yeah and what you said about um connecting with people you know, people, people are still in that mode of going out and pitching and selling. Yeah. Like people get taught elevator speeches, but, but it needs to come down to, like if you can't have a conversation with someone, get to know them and find out what their problem is, then what are you pitching to them? Right? Mm. Because you need to find out what their problem is. Yeah. What most people do is go out there and pitch something without knowing what their problem is. So therefore, how do you know that what you're, you're, what you're telling them yeah. is anything that's of interest to them? Correct. Right. Yeah. And that's where the listening comes in. Ask a question for them to speak and then keep asking those questions until you found out if your product or service is anything they need. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, people are tired of the other way. And I mean, this is the change that's going on, you know, with, with what you're doing now, maybe a few years ago, you wouldn't have been successful at it, you know, a no zoom, but, but also I don't think people were as open and I think people are hungry for connection now. Yeah. They're yeah. hungry to meet people. They're hungry for something else. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, 
we're, we're born to communicate and we're in a, although we're in a very socially connected world, people are losing the skills of just how to even have a normal conversation um, because of the communications all with technology. It's not bad, it's a great tool, um, but we, we just, yeah, it's about learning how to actually have conversations with people. And that seems to be a skill that's disappearing out there because um, yeah. Just, yeah, just the way people Well, you know, you, you talked about the elevator pitch. The trouble is when you get into the elevator nowadays, everybody's got headphones on that's listening true. to their phone. So, you know, yeah. unless you're miming the pitch, yeah. you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's yeah. a little hard nowadays. So, you know, it, it really you do only have a few seconds to kind of connect with people and open that door. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of things, yeah. eye contact. Yeah. Eye contact. Speak with your eyes first. Yes. And, and the one thing about, you know, when people have conversations, they tend to ask people about what they do. Mm. Um, you know, and I don't know why people do that, but, it, you know, just to have a conversation to learn about someone. Yes. Um, yep. Because, you know, what you do is not who you are. Yep. And that's something it took me a little while to understand. So, you know, what I do is, is not who I am. So, what, you know, but who are you? So that was um, learning that, um, yeah, you know, not to not to put people in any niches, um, box, any, yeah. Any box of niches, yeah, just because mm. of what they do. Yeah, it's kind of interesting questions to ask them. What do you do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and it's you know really look to your environment where you are right now, you know, in into where is the conversation in that, and you know it might be even as simple as the weather, you know, yeah. uh, or you know another political thing or, you know, anything that can open the door. And then from their response, you know which way you're going to go, right? So it's the opportunity. But that's when you're out there physically meeting. Of course, with social media, you know, you already started the conversation through the thread. Uh, yeah. And so you kind of already are building something up. And the next step is let's meet on Zoom and take this conversation further. So yeah. it does give you, it's, it's a one way of breaking the ice type of thing. Yeah. yeah. And when we were physically meeting people, um, Stephen actually had a pretty good way. He probably doesn't even realise that he was doing it. I don't know, but it just sort of popped into my head. So he'd say hello to someone, and if they responded with hello, he'd say, are you having a good day? And he asked that question often, and probably nine times out of ten, people would respond with, oh, yeah, I am, thanks, mate. How about you? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and you could see the surprise, like, oh, why is someone asking me if I had a good day? But, but it was a pleasant surprise. Yes. And, yes. and sometimes we'd even um, get a response about, oh, well, actually, no, because well, this happened and that happened and something yeah. else happened and we find ourselves, you know, hearing someone's bad story of that day and then we, you know, oh, gee, really sorry about all of that. And, and, but they got to, got to vent, I guess, so that made them feel better. Yeah. Um, but that, that just is a simple question that can open up all kinds of conversations. Are you having a good day? And yeah. it was a genuine question. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, not to forget the people who are in our service industry at the cash registers, you know, when you're ordering your yeah. coffee, coffee and paying for your groceries, you know, how are you doing? Is your shift over yeah. soon? You yeah. know, uh, um, yeah. has it been a busy day? You know, oh, God, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I hope it gets better for you, love, you know, and I'm thinking of you. And you know, there's that conversation. Sometimes it's not for the long conversation. You know, and it, and it can be, hey, can I take your selfie with you and have a smile and we can pass this on? And that person may say yes or no. You mm -hmm. know, there's another guy that does that, um, you know, with the smiles that has uh, the Down syndrome daughter. Um, yeah. that, um, you know, he does this all the time. He, he just yeah. stops people, gives them a balloon or something and let's have a smile and is spreading the smile, a smile. Someone else is doing it yeah. with kindness. And yeah. as I said, we need this right now. We, we've forgotten yeah. how to smile. We've forgotten yeah. how to be kind. We've forgotten how to care for each other. We've, we've so kind of cut ourselves off and insulated ourselves you know the headphones and i don't see you i don't hear you and but mm -hmm. then the inside of you is craving for connection yeah. Yeah. craving yeah. for that contact craving to be seen and heard so yeah. you know we if you're going to uh, have the headphones on well at least have the conversation with somebody on the other side <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah no, and we're mm. we're just excited that we're in this time where mm. we have the technology um, and, and like you said, I believe people right now are uh, just craving or wanting to really connect with people more than ever before. Um, and LinkedIn seems to be that environment where it's where people do want to connect. And yeah, we're just we're just loving this environment. And 
and getting to the point where we have you know um, appointments to have conversations with people that that are two weeks in advance mm. um, as opposed to you know meeting someone every day physically mm -hmm. you know, we now can go to our diaries and see that you know for the next um, and most and, and it's more than just the one a day well, some uh, days we've got four yeah because <laughs> the other question I get asked is who do you choose who you want to speak to and I go well, at the moment, we'll talk to anyone, anyone. that wants to talk to us. Yes. Um, and <laughs> We're not might, going anywhere. Yeah, which means there might be you know, two or three people we have conversations with a day. So, um, yeah, that's, that's just, uh, we're just enjoying this environment where we can communicate with people, um, you know, learn ourselves and hopefully let, hopefully when we part the conversation, leave them, um, you know, happier as well. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, the thing is, um, there, you know, you'll know the people that I, I aren't going to give you the time or the people who are just like, well, what am I going to get out of you? You know, and if they've got that kind of attitude, they're not going to get anything out of you yeah. because they've got to understand this isn't giving up their time. This is sharing their time with other people in an inspirational conversation. You have no idea if it's just for that moment or if it's going anywhere else, but if you are not willing to share your time and you're looking at your time as, you know, worth this and worth that and what am I going to get out of you, then you're not going to get this. This isn't going to be for you. Yes. Yeah. 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 What you're sharing is a heart connection. Yeah. Yeah. And what we find though is with with connecting with people on social media is people we never really had anyone that we didn't have a great conversation with right. they're, cho they're choosing to connect with us yeah. and they're yeah. choosing to allocate their time in their diary mm -hmm. so they're, they're coming ex they're coming expected mm -hmm. um, so you know that makes it that much easier um, but the, we learned the, the question we like to ask people when we talk to them is what's something interesting about themselves because we really do want to find out what's interesting about people that other people might not normally know. Right. Um, and you do That's really... pretty amazing uh, responses yeah. to that. Yeah, I, are, I know, see, people are extraordinary. You know, yeah. I mean, oh. one of the things I love doing on my podcast, which I'm sure you do as well, is sharing those stories that yeah. uplift us. You know, when we see the strength and the courage and there's somebody who's gone through something and who they've become because of yeah. it. That wonderful yeah. instrument they're sharing with an orchestra now. And yeah. it is so inspiring and inviting. And, you know, those stories stay with us, you know, and it's, um, they're, you're reminded at a time of your own challenges and go, you know, I heard a story on that. I hope yeah. I have the same strength and courage she did. What did she do? How can I apply it to myself? And all of this is seeding in the heart, the soul, and the mind. And it's the reason I do what I'm doing because the best teachers are those that have gone through the journey. Yep. And, yes. and when yep. we look at what people can do, the strength, the tenacity, just how strong we are, you yep. know, it, it is just phenomenal. And so it gives us permission to, it's okay to place value on yourself. You are that strong. You are that courageous. You do have those abilities. Don't yep. sell yourself short. Right. For sure. Yeah, no, we all have the seeds of greatness within us. We just yes. need to, we just need to, to, to lean into the challenges to, to see them come out. Yeah. We were talking before, which I'm not sure if it came up or not, we'll see, but on the extrovert introvertedness, and I was sharing a story about my brother, who is an introvert. He's an author, he's a professor, and, uh, you know, although he walks every day, and if somebody's got a dog, he'll talk to the dog, but he is not really good at talking with people. And one day I was at a coffee bar ahead of him, and when he came in, I was introducing him to all these people I'd just met, and he was horrified that I was talking to these people. Who are they? And I said, This person's got a of cars, you'd love them, and this person and does that and it's like how do you know this is such a short period of time and you know I, I'm introverted in many many ways but I'm extroverted uh, on other scales you know and we're capable of being both but for him it was just too horrific to kind of meet a group like that and it just scared the bejeebies out of him and where with me I grew up the shy one I was the one that I was so incredibly shy as a child. And I think I became the extrovert to cover my introvertness. And then it just right. stuck. <laughs> so we can overcome things. We can yes. change our patterns. Yes, most definitely. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think that, you know, what you're doing is great because what you're doing is honoring other people. That, that connection. Is, you know, you're saying, I see you. I hear you. I'm interested. I'm interested. And by sharing it, 
you know, either through the podcast or the photograph on Instagram and whatever you share on LinkedIn. It's just letting people know that you're gathering good people that, you know, yeah. this is the community and, and, um, as I said, whether they're just there for the moment where it becomes something different that that's for that tale to unfold. Yep. But we're needing this connection. We're needing to, for someone to say, I see you, I care, I'm yep. interested because so many people in this world that even maybe working in very high pressure jobs or working with a lot of people are lonely. Yes. Yes. And, um, and, and it's up for us to reach out. Yeah. And, and that's and as crazy as it is, that's, that's all we're doing is we just, we just want to reach out and, and, and talk to people. And again, it's just driven, comes back to us, the simplicity of us wanting to get better at having communications. Um, but yeah, you know, we've learned, but we've seen through this the, the need for, to do this, we've seen the need that, to, to reach out and talk to people because people are itching to tell their story um, and we just happen to be a forum of which they can tell that story. Um, and yeah, and it's quite amazing mm. to see and, and listen to people and like it's, I don't know what the word is, we just feel so thankful and respectful. And so, mm. so amazed that we get this little bit of time in people's lives mm. that, we be, that we get to know them in some small way. Yeah. You know, we can't say we're great friends with them, but we get to know them in some small way. And we, we just see that as a great privilege that they opened up their life for us for that brief moment and were willing to share um, things about themselves to us, which are literally complete strangers um, from the other side of the world in, in most cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, just, we just find that amazing. Like some people, you know, they collect, um, they collect stuff. Some people get adrenaline rushes by jumping out of airplanes <laughs> and, and, you know, bungee jump and things like that. For us right now, our, our, our sport, I guess, or our, the thing that gives us the most joy is actually just connecting with people. You're you know, gathering who, people. Who yeah. is it that we're going to talk today? Like, I've got a, today we've got a, a guy lined up from Adelaide. Can't even quite remember where he's from. Um, we're speaking later on in the day to a guy from Sydney, an older guy, who used to go around to old age homes and talk to people and when the coronavirus comes he's now turned he's, he does window therapy now oh bless him <laughs> he, he, goes, he goes up for windows and 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 does things to communicate with the elderly people um so we're speaking to Mori, the the window therapist and we come across him because a lady in dubai that we spoke mm -hmm. to said there's two people on linkedin i really admire it's this guy and another guy so we connected with Mori. We set up a time to see Mori and invited the lady from Dubai to join us when we speak to Mori. Mm -hmm. So things like that are quite, yeah. quite amazing. Because you allowed it to happen. You allowed yeah. it to unfold. You weren't dictating. Yeah. You know, you were inviting. You yeah. know, inspiration yeah. will always invite. And then we go to events. So Donna was, I had to do other stuff. Donna was at an event last night. Uh, online. Online, 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 right, yes, online events. You're not yeah. meant to be out there yet. <laughs> and, uh, and at that event, some young guy in the UK uh, connected with what Donna said. So he connected with Donna afterwards. So we're, we're speaking to him to, uh, yeah. later on tonight yeah. from the UK. So mm. it's like, it's just an amazing yes. snowball of, and we find them all interesting. Like, yeah. what is it that they're going to tell us? Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm, I mean, as I said, I've been doing, you know, podcasting for eight years and it really has, it really revived my, my faith in humanity. You know, I was really looking at it at one time and going, really, why doesn't the delete button just press, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and then just seeing how many people with no matter what they've gone through, you yeah. know, what they're doing for humanity today and that, how many souls and hearts out there that are just, a, just heavenly they're, they're so wonderful and yeah. things that they're doing and, and, and how they came about to doing it you know providing toilets for the 1.5 billion that don't have them you know I mean he was a, a different corporate guy doing something totally different before and I love those redirects yeah. you know they're absolutely wonderful and and life is about flow you know life is about in, in a continuous moment and always willing to learn willing to bend and willing to explore and you know you really pick something that is exploratory you know it's every day somebody new to meet and and share their story and 
and now of course you're taking it further you know with the podcast where people can can listen to those spontaneous people that you meet so i think it's wonderful yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Know, people have asked us um you know what what's going to happen at the the 366 day mark you know are you going to keep going do you think or are you just going to stop there and we just think well we can't even really think about that right now we can't even comprehend you know because with what's happening it's really evolved from yes. from the word go because it's been physically meeting people to meeting people online to sometimes you know doing podcasts with people to now looks like we'll be possibly joining more than one people in a conversation because someone's recommended someone yeah. that they really admire and who knows what's going to come next no. you know you just follow you just go with the flow yeah, by the time we get to the 366 days, um, it's, well, it's, it's either reset the that. next, the next 300. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I mean that's, um, you know, you you've got 300, you know, 55 or 65 days, 2020. You can do the next one, 21, yeah. right? So, um, yeah. you just and then you know which year it is. So nothing says you have to stop. And you know, when I first started doing podcasting, I mean, I was doing it live for 13 months, and you know, that was a training definitely yeah. um, before I opened up my own network and you know I look at how I started with my own network I really didn't know anything everything was on the fly just just you know go with it and everything yeah. has just evolved as you learn but yeah. allowing it to go with the flow and be what it is today yeah. and yeah. Uh, you know that's all you're meant to be I'm not competing with anyone you're not competing with anyone we're all just doing our own thing because there's enough room for everybody yeah. and that's the best way to do it isn't it because yeah. we're not perfect and and if we can do something on the fly, as you put it, and just start doing it and go, look, we'll, we'll just decide we're going to do it and figure it out as we go along. Yeah. You know, and you're going to have little mess ups here and there and mumbles and fumbles and that. And that's great for people to see because mm. you know, I don't ever want to come across as, as, as thinking that I'm perfect or got everything under control yeah. because we're far uh -huh. from it. Yeah. And we want people to know that we're, we're completely vulnerable too and yeah. we... You know, we're bumbling our way through life, just, just figuring things out yeah. as they happen. And, and hey, hey I've been yeah. doing this eight years and we still had a faux pas here today. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, shoot happens, you know, and, and especially when you are working with something called the internet. Yeah. It, uh, it's a wonderful tool when it works right. When it doesn't work right, you know about it. And, you know, what can you do but just breathe, take it yeah. all in your stride and, and just go about it. And, uh, and that's another beautiful thing about doing things you know pre-recorded is is if, if you do have a drop if you do have something you can reschedule it's very mm. hard to do that with live you know so yeah well, i do like what donna just said like you know we're not saying we're far from being great communicators like yeah. nowhere near it we're just we're learning you're organic and truthful yeah. that's what counts the, the one thing that we are conscious about though is what are we doing today? Like, mm. who have we got today? All, all I can, again, go back, all I can control is the next person that we're going to talk to. Um, knowing and having that belief that if I do that consistently enough, that at the end of that process, we will be better communicators yeah. than we were 12 months ago. Yes. Um, how much better, I don't know. I'm not, right. you know, but again, right today, all we can do today is the, the thing that's in front of us yeah. um, and to make sure that we connect with enough people to have someone else we can see tomorrow and then the day after. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just really, I guess, excited about the process and then knowing that at the end of all this, there is going to be some outcome, um, but yeah, that'll come as part of being true to, right. the, to the daily activities. Yeah. And as you said, you know, you didn't know it was going to be this when you started. And you don't know what it's going to be when you get to that year mark or where it's going to go from there. And that's the thing is just let it evolve naturally, organically, and go with its flow, right? You can decide then, do we want to continue with this or do we not? Yeah. <laughs> I've always been spontaneous. Yes, so yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I've I've learned that the the more you try and dictate the way you want something, the less it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. yes. The more things just come up yeah. to block you away, don't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The universe is going to take us where it wants us to go. We can have a passion and a desire, like I have. I've got a blueprint up there, waiting to 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 ignite. And every time I think it's now, something happens. Says not now, but yeah. it's there. It's yeah. ready to have the button pushed on it. Yeah. And it will happen with the right people when it's ready. And that's all we can do. Live in the yeah. now. The gift of the present is in the now. 
Yep. 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 Right, yes. Cool. Mm. That's what we look forward to. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, you know, most people when they retire take up golf or take up this or take up that. And many, many retirees die early because they've got no interest whatsoever anymore. Um, but here you two have decided, you know, to take a totally different path together unknown just you know experimental and exploratory and i think it's wonderful you know it just people have got this preconceived idea that once you hit a certain age you need to go out to pasture no we've got we've got we're not going to follow our heart you know we're going to follow what what means something to us and we want to be proactive and we want to know we're still contributing right yeah. and this is the passion and so yeah. don't write us off no, i have no intention of ever retiring yeah you know if it happens, it'll be because it has to, but I, yes. I, I don't look to that in my future at all. Right. I think it sounds boring and stagnating. Yeah, yeah. I may slow down, but I can't ever see me stopping. Because exactly. you, know, you need to have something, a reason to get up every day, you know, outside of, you know, walking a dog or spouse or whatever but it's it's, it's that something that you know when it's you, you know you talked about work beforehand or not being identified, you know, I am Sarah, the podcaster. You know, I'm a knowledge sharer. Uh, who you get right now and who I am as a person is exactly the same person. Yeah. I am my work because my work is me, right? It's a reflection of me and, I'm, and we are as one. Yeah. Um, and yeah. uh, because I bring me to the table every time. And yeah. uh, I mean, that's the difference when you're bringing yourself and you're yeah. doing it because of your own conviction, your own passion, yeah. then, then you are at one with it, yeah. right? Yeah. it's your heart yeah yeah you, you work from your heart yes yeah. and it's yeah. not necessarily something you do it's something you are yes and yeah. you just share it in this way right yeah. 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 yeah so how do people follow you on instagram and on linkedin and podcast and all of that where where do we find you so, how do people friend you <laughs> yes so people can find us on uh, instagram it's it's the stephen fry so there with Stephen with an E or an yep, A? So Stephen with an E. Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-F-R-Y. So right. the Stephen Fry on Instagram because um, it's another Stephen Fry in the UK that's a comedian. <laughs> so I yes, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite as funny as him, but it's I the Stephen Fry. Um, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and, on, and on LinkedIn, it's, uh, it's Stephen Fry and it should be easier to find you because I'm I, I haven't seen anyone else on LinkedIn with a photo of a couple. So yes. on, on LinkedIn, yes. it's, it's me and Donna and the photo together. Yeah. Um, and my LinkedIn profile is very descriptive, like very non-descriptive because, you know. I'm Donna, not... write it for him. <laughs> <laughs> write, write the two of you in. You're doing yeah. this as a couple. It should be couple yeah. information. <laughs> it's a couple on a so, yeah. so, yeah, so it should be pretty easy to find. And we create podcasts and some of our speak some of the people we've met with turn into podcasts and you can find that on apple Podcasts. that's just what i've done um, what is the name of the podcast the adelaide entrepreneur club entrepreneur club adelaide entrepreneur club adelaide entrepreneur club adelaide. right right the city that we live yeah. Yeah. so those those three things you can find all the people we've met on instagram at the stephen fry um everything we've done we've recorded on the instagram and then those that are also on LinkedIn, we also put on LinkedIn. So it's, it's for whatever so you, reason. Instagram. Your, your podcasts are just audio right now, not video? Well, no, just audio. So, you know. So the one with Derek, is that? Yeah, but yeah. So okay. just, yeah. just really raw. You know, we, yeah. we never thought of doing podcasts. So mm -hmm. um, we, Except it's, it's a lot of work to do video. So give yourself yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we just, um, yeah, just use Zoom to record conversations that we have with people. Um, yeah, very quite interesting. So we've only done eight so far. Mm -hmm. um, the last podcast we released was from a guy we met on our journey in the UK. He's a he has a background as a comedian and improvisation um, applies that to coaching. Now, just a very funny guy. Um, we had to go back and record a podcast with him. <laughs> so yeah, so excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, was, thank was, you, thank you both very much. You know, it's um. um you know, sorry for the faux pas that we had in there, but again, that's life. You know, it's like, you know, you get a hiccup or you have a trip, you know, you don't cancel everything just because you had a, had a trip. You know, it's, it's uh, just a question of going with the flow and that's what life is all about, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm glad that you're doing this. It's, it's, you're sharing the cheer. 
you know, I, I get asked, you know, do you interview celebrate as, as celebrities? And I go, yes, every day. Because yeah. I celebrate the people that are coming on, so they're my celebrities, yeah. you know. And thank you for being our celebrity here today, you know, sharing that connection. Uh, we need the connection. We're hungry for it. And this is why your, your response to what you're doing is so big, is because people, no matter who they are, and as you notice, entrepreneurs, pe business people, comedy people, you're, you're so busy kind of talking at people that you're not necessarily talking with people in your work and you know having somebody that's willing to talk with you is important and i think that's what the difference is you see them you hear them and you allow them to be yeah. thank you so much we really appreciated um we really appreciated uh, you asking us to come and uh, come and share oh it's an awesome thing that you're doing so thank you for being so awesome thank you thank you <laughs> and uh, folks until next time remember say hello to somebody that's a perfect stranger, okay? Because you just might make their day and be interested, start a conversation. It might be a few words or it might lead to something longer and bigger like it has with them. But the point is see each other because we all want to be seen. Until next time, bye for now. We hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to bringing you more shows. Please go to selfdiscoverymedia.com slash shows and you will see the incredible lineup of genres and shows that we have for you. We are here to make a difference in your life. Thank you for listening.